You may have heard about Bitcoin. That's a virtual currency that's been around for about four years, but is just now starting to gain more interest from retailers and from investors. Because of that, Congress wants to find out more about the digital payment system, whether it's secure and if it's good or bad for consumers. Mary Thompson was at a House hearing today in Washington, and she joins us now. Mary, let's start with some of the basics. What is Bitcoin and how does it work? Well, Tyler, just as you said, Bitcoin is a virtual currency. So if you're going to buy one, you pay cash for Bitcoin. You keep it in an online wallet, and then you can use the Bitcoins that you have to pay for services or goods at retailers that accept Bitcoins. Now, a couple of things are different about a Bitcoin than, let's say, U.S. dollars. First of all, it's not backed by a single government or a commodity like gold. It was also created by an anonymous Japanese programmer who limited the number of Bitcoins that actually can be produced to about 21 million. Currently, there are 12 million in circulation, and they are produced by computers solving complex mathematical problems. Once those problems are solved, they get a couple of more Bitcoins that are put into circulation. And the value of the Bitcoin, well, that's determined on a number of internet exchanges around the globe where investors and retailers trade these digital currencies. It sounds a little complicated for the individual <laughs> guy. Uh, I don't know how the Congress uh, you know, felt about all of this information. Why are lawmakers looking into the Bitcoin? Well, there are two reasons. First of all, there's a lot of hope in these or promise in these digital currencies, primarily for two reasons. One, the speed at which you can transact, meaning I can send mm -hmm. money from my online wallet to you in a matter of seconds, possibly without any of the transaction fees that you might find with a credit card or even transferring money from one bank account to another. Also, there's expectations that you could bring financial inclusion to millions of people who don't have access to a bank or cash, but may have access to a phone where they could store their digital wallet. But, of course, there are concerns as well, in large part because criminals see digital currencies as their favorite form of money. And as we heard in testimony today from Edward Lowry of the Department of Homeland Security, that's made their, um, or from Secret Service, actually, that's made law tougher trying to track fraud. Listen in. One of the largest changes uh, is the reach, the reach of the criminal. It used to be that we had to worry about, uh, back in the days of early access device fraud, we had to worry about someone dumpster diving or, or trying to get an actual, you know, image of your, your credit card. Um, today, anyone in the world can reach anyone else in the world, and that's changed how we, uh, how we have to enforce our laws. Point of discussion, again, in today's hearing. Mary, who's using this? Who's investing in it? And, and what is my risk? In other words, uh, could my bitcoins lose value? They certainly could lose value. What we've seen recently is a huge jump in the value of bitcoins. It first came to, I think, the general public's attention during the eurozone crisis. A number of investors or consumers in Cyprus looking for a place to store their money. Well, basically, they said they put their money in bitcoin. The price of bitcoins rocketed. And since then, we've seen investors from China taking a renewed interest in this, retailers from China starting to accept it as a form of payment, and then investors in the United States, famously the Winkelross twins, who were early investors in Facebook, they have been uh, proponents of Bitcoin. But more recently, Second Markets has opened a Bitcoin investment trust. So we're seeing global interest in the digital currency. But again, if you look at how far it's climbed, it could easily fall just as fast as people start to lose interest in it. All right, Mary, thank you very much. Mary Thompson reporting sure. from The Hill for us tonight. And for more on Bitcoin and today's hearings, head to our website, nbr.com.